What's up guys? We've seen how to model or how to get stoichiometric tables for batch reactors and in this video we're going to talk about now continuous flow systems uh, which are reactors of course PFR, CSTR, etc. Now uh, it's almost the same the only thing is that we're going to model now flows rather than moles and you know that the flow is essentially mole per unit time. So we got this volumetric flow interaction, you know that times concentration you get flow. Now we have the same stuff here, the reaction of A, B gives you C and D. Remember always to send this factor out. D, okay? And let's see, this will be our table. Let me explain it to you slowly. Species A, B, C, D, I. Uh, first of all, this here is our base or limiting reactant. So initial flow is this one here. The change we're going to have is of course the conversion that is going to have that initial flow. It's negative because it's reacting, so you are going to disappear material. And the final value is essentially the addition of this column with this column. So f of a0 minus this f of a0 times x of a can be or is this value here. And probably this value makes you uh, sense because the definition of conversion is done also by similar. Now that's for letter A or species A. What will happen if you have a reactant uh, a side A, or let's say if you have another reactant, we want to base it also in terms of A. So our flow rate, our initial flow rate, can be defined by this H value here. Remember this H value was moles of B at the initial moment and moles of A at the initial moment. Well, if we divide it by time, we have the same stuff our flow rate. It's flow rate of B at the initial time divided by flow rate of A at the initial time. So that's why we can still use this number here. Then the only thing we have here is a new stoichiometric value which is, wait for it, is here. And it's negative because it's being reacted. So it's, don't forget that, negative and negative if they are reactant, positive and positive if you are producing. So how do we get this third column? It's essentially just add this plus this, you get this. Next one, sorry about that, I got this a little bit angled here, but we have species C and D, we're going once again do this and do this, just be sure that you have C and D here, and the change is positive and positive, I told you it's being produced, and the stoichiometric value here. Everything is everything else is exactly the same. So you check out and as you will see, let me actually take away this, you have everything in terms of f of a and everything in terms of x of a. The only thing that changes is this is the geometric value here, here and here and that you are referencing to the initial state here. Okay? And by definition the change of inert material is zero. So the initial is the same as the final. And if you wanted to check the total, it's easy. Just add up everything, total moles, initial moles. This value here, you know it by sure. It's this symbol here. This stays the same. And well, if you add all of this number, or if you add this number here, you will get the total amount of volumes. Why I'm taking the total amount? because maybe you want to calculate the concentration or the mole fraction. Mole fraction of A will be essentially flow of A divided by total flow. That's one example of why would you want to calculate the total amount of flow. Good. One thing is having flows, but you know that by now concentrations are a little bit more useful. And how do you relate a flow with a concentration? It's essentially just dividing by this value here. So let me divide everything by volumetric flow, by volumetric flow, 
by volumetric flow and by volumetric flow and we're going to get this here also as you can see our h circle of i function is you can relate because it's the same volume if i were to uh, let's change this to c of i initial times volumetric flow initial and this is a concentration of a initial times volumetric flow rate initially you can cancel this because they are the same and you will get that the concentration here and here are the same which was exactly the same with batch remember with the batch we got n of i initially divided by n of i at any moment this is the h circle function maybe also calculated as concentration of i initially and concentration of ac so if it's uh, a batch reactor or a continuous flow reactor you will see that the concentrations or these definitions are the same so please check out compare your batch video before and see this video and you will see that there the definition of this h circle i function is the same for everyone so okay let's change everything here to concentration so as you can see you have concentration 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 okay forcing concentration here you will see this goes here remember that f of b at any moment and f of c at any moment and f of t at any moment is this we're just dividing by volume here volumetric flow volumetric flow and what else do we have to change volumetric flow rate okay we are forcing once again the value h here and we will get something familiar probably you're familiar with everything here where is it here yeah so if you want to compare with our batch you will see that it's exactly the same let me actually show you the batch where is it the batch that is a little bit here here one two yeah we're getting the same equations either you use liquid phase or gas phase if you use batch or flow you're going to get the same here and the same here and if you have constant volume in a gas reaction you have the same here so that's awesome that we have one re uh, or one style of uh, equation for liquid phase so you don't need to think anymore about it, if it liquid phase or not or is it batch or flow rate you just need to calculate it for this here okay let's go back here here where were we yeah here now once again these equations are only valid when volumetric flow rate is constant so volumetric flow rate at the beginning is the same at the end an example is for every liquid phase reaction we saw it in the diagram before and a special condition is when you got isobaric isothermal reactions with no changes in moles so this number must be zero and p1 must be p2 and t1 must be t2 so if you got this condition, you can use these equations. And once again, these equations do not apply when you have a change in pressure. You're going to have a pressure drop and pressure drop implies change in volume. When you have a change in temperature or when they are non-isothermals. Or when you do have a change in volume. So this value is not zero. For example, you got one change of moles, one or you got minus one, whatever value you got that is not zero, then you you cannot use these equations. So the interesting part is how do we account for that? And we're going to see that in the next section. But what I want you to tell you is keep just understand how do we get these equations because we are going to use them like not by heart don't learn them by heart you will have them in your formulary but just be sure when to apply it because these equations are only valid for constant volume guys i'll see you in the next video what's up guys it's me chemical engineering guy so if you like the video, why not push the like button? 
it really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.